Hey, what's up, heroes of YouTube? Nick here to talk about the House of the Dragon episode one premiere that crashed HBO's app last night. Yes, that was hilarious. Waiting 15, 20 ish minutes to actually watch the episode. Uh, but it did break records for HBO. So, you know, kudos to them having the largest, largest premiere and having a you know pretty good one at that. So in this video, I'm going to talk about things I enjoyed from this first episode, things from the book, some spoilers, perhaps I will give some sort of timestamp to make sure that people aren't spoiled. And, but if, you know, if you want to take a little listen and a little gander at what I have to say, then by all means play with fire like a Targaryen. And yeah, we're just going to chat a little bit. So, uh, any comments, any you know, chit chat you want to throw in the comment section below, by all means, I will uh, love to chat about this, about this show. So right off the bat, I'm going to give this episode like an 8, 8.5 out of 10. Reason being is because they got a lot right from the book, the source material, the thing at which this show would not exist under. I think Game of Thrones is back. I know that might be a little bit of a preconceived notion considering we've only had one episode, but if my hypothesis is correct and they're going basically, you know, based off of what this book here has to offer and this other book here, I'll show in a second, then again, we're going to get a damn good show and we deserve it because for those of us that have watched eight seasons of game of Thrones and we're severely disappointed with the eighth season and somewhat of the seventh season, uh, then we deserve a damn good redemption season here. So that being said, why did I give it this good of a rating? Because I think a few they, they got quite a few things right. Uh, Miguel Sp uh, Spashnik, who did some of the best episodes in Game of Thrones, Hard Home, uh, Battle of the Bastards, like just great episodes. He is a phenomenal director. Um, and he knows he knows this territory, right? And that is another great way to enter this first episode. Someone who is familiar with the lore knows George R. R. Martin, right? Like, like you can't really go wrong with that point. And I, and I don't think they did go wrong. I thought the, the intro music, you could hear notes that were similar to the Game of Thrones theme song. And people were like, oh, it's not the same Game of Thrones theme song. I'm like, it's not the same show. Yes, it's the same universe, but it's not the same show. So... I liked, I thought, I thought this new uh, score was very tasteful. Yeah. And you're kind of throwing little, little notes here and there because you can actually see that the composer who, who did this actually wanted to give a little bit of an homage um, from an orchestra perspective uh, for us fans who know, and, and actually, you know, use our ears to listen to that sort of thing. Um, now I will say for the sake of the sets and the wardrobe, right. I, were great. Look, looked, looked incredible. Um, you know, and yeah, I thought the CGI was very crisp. The special visual effects were, were very crisp, crisp, very well done. Uh, I thought the dragons looked, looked great. Um, and you know, for, for the actors themselves, uh, great job. I, I don't have anything negative to say from anyone, any of the acting, the show is going to get a lot of things right. And a lot of it does come from the book itself. Um, you know, one of the things I appreciate is them expanding from the pages in the text. I'm going to read a passage here. Thus did matters stand in King's Landing late in the year 105 AC, which stands for Aegon's Conquest, when, when Queen Emma was brought to bed in Magor's Holdfast and died whilst giving birth to the son that Viserys Targaryen had desired for so long. The boy, named Balon, after the king's father, survived her by only a day leaving king and court bereft save perhaps for prince damon who was observed in a brothel on the street of silk making drunken japes with his highborn cronies about the air for a day literal word for word in here right like they're you know they're they're taking this scene while the tourney is happening and they're they're going george let's explore this scene a bit more we know she dies while giving childbirth and as i'm watching i'm like oh man this is where she dies 
oh, 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 damn, they're actually showing it. You know, n not to mention that they kind of, you know, went further along by saying, like, listen, Viserys isn't going to tell his wife, the queen, about what's about to happen. He's making that decision because, as it was told to the king, the king will have to make a hard decision here to save the boy or rather the baby or to save his wife. So obviously he went with the gamble of, well, maybe it's a boy and that would be my heir. And then he could tell his wife that you delivered me a boy, like, you know, thank you so much sort of thing. Um, but he never really gets to, to say that, you know, regardless. And you can kind of hear this gurgling noise from, uh, from the baby. And I had a watch party at my place last night uh, or Sunday night rather. And um, of course, uh um someone was like did the baby just die and i'm like i'm not saying anything uh because yes it did and again just to sort of see it you know in the in the the pages here the words you don't get this emotion you can read and go oh damn that's kind of messed up um but seeing it you know bringing this emotion from the actors and just the whole scene, the tension going back and forth and like cutting away to, you know, to the C-section that's happening, right? Like they couldn't perform successful C-sections back in that day, you know, uh, even in a fictionary stance, you know, going and cutting to the, to the turning with the jousting, right. Where things are getting heated um, uh, with uh, Prince Damon. Right. And, um, and so again, I appreciate them taking what's in the pages here, but uh, I imagine they went to, you know, George for this and were like, Hey, let's figure out a way to, you know, bring this scene. And, and obviously like you're creating more screen time, right? Like you're creating more, uh, more time to, you know, build in the season. And there's obviously a lot of importance about this as well, because uh, I'll, I'll continue on here in the, in the book. Uh, when word of this got back to the King, Legend says that it was the whore sitting in Damon's lap who informed him, but evidence suggests it was actually one of his drunken companions, a captain in the gold cloaks eager for advancement. Viserys became livid. His grace had finally had a surfeit of his ungrateful brother and his ambitions. So we obviously know more about what took place on screen about this you know when he says did you say it you know and as, as Viserys is sitting on the Iron Throne and Damon is standing there before him and four guards uh, King's Guardsmen right like uh who are ready to draw on him the prince by the way like he's like don't care that your family we're here for the king right and when Viserys asked did you say it he's like yeah I did now he's in exile you know he's he's casted away um, which kind of, I wonder what's going to happen. Um, you know, we obviously see him, uh, on his dragon Caraxes, which I really liked even the description in here, which I think they got right. Even, even with the special effects, the lean red beast, the small folk called the blood worm, like it really evoked this, this worm, like, you know, dragon sense, um, you know, very almost similar to, to Smaug in a way from the hobbit um obviously just not as large as smog was but um still like you know he was uh so the woman i believe uh getting if the pages are right um is with Maseria. um so again there's a lot of good stuff that's coming like i really what i really enjoy what they've set up here and like how you can really follow along um with with the pages and you know uh, and a couple of cool things, cool scenes that they showed, you know, in, in the, in this first episode, um, you know, where Viserys is, uh, talking with his daughter, uh, Rhaenyra, and you can see the giant skull from, uh, Balerion the Dread. And, you know, one of the, one of the awesome parts that, uh, is, in the in the pages here um it says viserys had also been the last targaryen to ride balerion though after the death of the black dread in 19, uh, in 94 ac he never mounted another dragon 
and that's kind of cool to think about like you know it, like an honor like almost like an in an, a honorary sense for family lineage right like Aegon, who rode Balerion, and then later on, Viserys then learned to ride Balerion after Aegon had passed away. And just the connection, I feel like, like after that, it's like, I'll never, I'll never ride another dragon, you know? Like, I think that's just really cool for just his lore's sake. Um, so, and again, I, I think those small little subtle hints of which might not seem significant, but you know, he's kind of having this almost like a, like soul searching moment. I feel like in that scene, there's, you know, the candles that are lit around the giant skull of Balerion. He's like asking, you know, Venera, what do you see when you see the dragons? Right. Cause I feel like Viserys had this moment in the episode that we don't really see, but like in the scene itself and the question he asks his own daughter, like, you know, I didn't pay attention to you for, for years. And in terms of the setting, when, when, when she asks, or when he asks her, what do you see when you see the dragon? She's like, well, I just see us. And like, he's looking at his favorite dragon that he rode, that his ancestor rode before him um, and the significance behind it. You know, and obviously, even for for her at a young age, much like a lot of Targaryens, they learn to ride young, and um, they're just you know one one with the dragons um, as they have been since Valeria. So, you know, I think it's really awesome what they're including uh, in this show. And um, there was something I, I underlined here in the in this book. Um, that says many consider the reign of King Viserys the first to represent the apex of Targaryen power in Westeros. And that kind of gives us a, the setting a little bit of, you know, not only more context, but it raises the stakes more, right? Like he hasn't had a boy yet, yet, but he has a girl and he names her heir to the throne. Damon, his younger brother, could have been heir to the throne, but it's too wild. A bit of a loose cannon, a wild card. And he kind of got sent away. Spoilers. Spoilers here, okay? Obviously, if you're familiar with the trailer, we know that there's going to be a time skip because Rhaenyra, the actress, is different. She looks older. That's because... They go along with the book. Damon and Rhaenyra uh, end up having uh, children of their own, much like keeping the the Targaryen uh, bloodline pure. And Viserys also has a few siblings, or sorry, uh, also has a few children, a few more children at that, with none other than Alicent Hightower who is, I guess, best friends with Rhaenyra, right? So kind of a little bit of an awkward moment. Um, and the interesting thing, though, about this, and, uh, you know, it, for those of you who are paying attention to the spoiler here, because you already know this, um, you know, within the within the, the family tree here, um, Alicent and Viserys end up having the next king of the Iron Throne. Aegon Targaryen, second of his name. But then after Aegon dies, sorry, again, this is all spoilers. Uh, Rhaenyra also gives birth to Aegon Targaryen, the third of his name, dubbed the Unlucky. So there's a lot of cool stuff that's coming. And I I do wonder how many seasons this is going to go. Because again, um, there, there's a lot, uh, a lot to include here, you know, a lot of pages to be to you know to go through. Um, and, uh, I know I wonder if this will eventually all lead up to, um, uh, Eris and, uh, the Mad King and it would be really, really cool. Again, I feel like they could, you know, I'm not even gonna milk this show. Um, uh, I just think again, if you're covering the source, source material correctly and efficiently, like I think they've done in this first episode here, you know, we're going to see, um, you know, a lot, a lot more awesome stuff. 
Um, not do I think they might do more time skips potentially. I just don't think they, I don't think they'll need to, um, you know, uh, again, just to kind of give you guys, um, you know, a little bit of a time frame here, right? Like it says in the beginning that this is 172 years before Daenerys Targaryen, um, you know, and, uh, Viserys essentially, you know, ruled from 103 to 129 AC. And then, uh, Eris the second, who was the mad King ruled from 262 to 283 AC. So, um, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of years to go through, you know, and again, I don't know if they'll, they'll skip anything. Um, they possibly, you know, they could, um, but it would be, it would, it would be cool to see, uh, Robert Baratheon's uh, rebellion and um, like, you know, dethroning and killing um, uh, the Mad King and um, and Rhaegar Targaryen as well. Um, but conversely, I think it would be awesome to see how this book starts with Aegon's conquest. Like I, that is one of my wants and hopes for this season that we get some sort of flashback um, even to to tell more about it, um, maybe not this season, but again, maybe in, in a second season or 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 third season potentially. Um, I don't know if I doubt they'll even do some sort of spinoff show or something along those lines. That's just like Aegon's conquest. I don't even know if 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 it would be worth doing like an offshoot movie. Um, that premieres on HBO. That's like you know House of the Dragon you know, uh, colon Aegon's conquest, like to, sh to show all that they could, you know, I think they, they could do it, you know, a two and a half, three hour movie justice of that. Um, whereas they don't need to make it a whole season. But again, I, I think you could, could have potentially get and get or gotten six to eight seasons of this with this entire book here, because, you know, additionally, um, another book that I have gone through, um, is the world of ice and fire. So it's a bit of a history book here. Um, great artwork. Uh, you know, just like, it's really cool. Um, right here, you've got, um, Damon Targaryen who's offering, uh, his crown to Viserys, his brother. Um, that was a semi spoiler. Sorry about that. Um, but, but, uh, yeah, just a really cool book to, to go through and read as well. Um, just talk about everything. And um, obviously like this whole book isn't going to be all about the show, but at least there's, you know, certain bits about the Targaryens that it will be included uh, and conversely with the fire and blood book. So um, yeah, uh, listen, if, if you're out there and you're watching this and you're like, Nick, I, I don't care about this. I've listened to you for 20 minutes now and I'm still not convinced. Well, if you've made it this far, just give it a shot. You know, uh, I understand it's an hour of your time. Give it a chance. See if you like it. Keep coming back here. Uh, I'm going to talk more about this whole entire season week by week. And, you know, I, I think there could be a very, very good and very fun show to talk about here online to you all watching this. So uh, that being said, uh, if you'd like to help support me in this channel here, give this uh, channel a little thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, share with your friends and your family and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, I do appreciate it. Um, obviously I try to watch shows and deliver some uh, content uh, on the side here. It's just a little bit of a passionate thing that I like to talk about and watch. So um, yeah, comment uh, below uh, about what you think of this episode. You know, again, I had a buddy who watched this show last night uh, for the first time, didn't even make it through season two of Game of Thrones, and he really enjoyed it. So um, if if he can like the show and I can barter a deal with him to watch it um, where I watch the show Fargo, uh, then for those of you, those of you out there who have not watched the show can also give it a chance. So. I appreciate everyone's time, and uh, that being said, I will catch everyone on the next video. Cheers.